very frustrating, you know, because he beat me in the final of the Worlds twice, and then one time he beat me in the semifinal of the Open Division. It taught me a lot, though. It was, in a way, it was almost like a good thing that I lost. You know, no one wants to lose. You know, of course, I was devastated after those losses, you know, but it, it taught me so much about myself and things I had to work on. Roger's definitely a, a huge challenge for anyone. You know, he's beaten almost everyone. There's like very, I don't think there's anyone that this guy hasn't beaten yet. After I won the Open in 2007, a lot of people always, Robert, the best grappler in the world. And I've never liked that because I always felt that Roger was still there. You know, there's still Roger, you know, like I can't say that. I can't say that yet because he's still there, you know. Until I beat him, I can't say that. And I've always felt that in a way it was my destiny to be that guy, you know, like I have to be that guy. I'm not that guy yet. I'm close, but I'm not that guy yet. I will be that guy once I beat him. And then there'll be no one else for me to beat. This Abu Dhabi super fight will be different. It's it's not gonna be him bullying me and pushing me and putting that kind of pressure on me when I'm trying to play the guard with him. It won't be. It'll be me pushing him around. You know, and he makes a mistake, I'm taking him down. My name is Robert Drysdale, I'm 27 years old and uh, I'm a jiu-jitsu black belt. And uh, that's my job. I train and I teach. Go, go, faster, come up. Let's go, let's go, get it here, get it here, come up. I was born in the United States. I moved to Brazil when I was six. Uh, I grew up in Brazil. I came back in 99. I lived in 99 and 2000. And then I went back to Brazil for jiu-jitsu. And then I uh, recently relocated to Las Vegas. So jiu-jitsu started becoming very popular in Brazil after Hoist Gracie. And around 97, 98, I was looking for a school. So I started training in 98. And once I got into jiu-jitsu, that was it, man. I never imagined I'd make it this far. But I just knew this, that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. There's nothing. I enjoy more in life than training. There is nothing. It's the best thing in the world. I, that's why I come here every day. It's not a job. It really isn't. I have huge pleasure in what I do. Robert Drysdale is one of those coaches that if you, if you come to train with him, you're going to get better. You can be a black belt already or you can be a, a world champion, and you're going to come train with Robert Drysdale, and he's going to make you better. He's one of those grapplers that understands the game to the point to where he can be a, a world champion himself, and he could be a world champion coach at the same time. And it's very hard to find a guy that can do that. Robert can roll with you, he can train you, he can teach you, he can do anything. And then involves grappling. He's a very gifted individual. The one thing that really, you know, always got my attention with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was that it's not just physical, but there's a lot of mental aspect into it. You know, like a lot of sports will be pure athleticism. You know, and Jiu Jitsu has like so many different elements into it. How many movements can you make with your, with your body? It's just infinite. beyond chess, there's so much more. You can train your whole life and you'll never have mastered jiu-jitsu. There's a, a select few guys that, that are on the upper echelon of the best grapplers in the world. And uh, Robert Drysdale and Javi Gracie is one of those fights where the winner of that grappling match is going to be the best grappler in the world, or considered the best grappler in the world. And um, it's a match that, you know, I'll, I wish I could be there live and watch it live. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a beautiful thing to watch. Well, I'm going to Barcelona September 27th. Uh, I got a super fight, the main event, against Roger Gracie. Uh, it's the biggest grappling event in the world. Being invited to Abu Dhabi is a big deal. You know, not everyone gets invited. There are two ways of getting into Abu Dhabi. Actually, three. You're the champ. You get invited. Like, very few people get invited. Or you win the trials, which are extremely difficult to do. I couldn't even imagine that I was going to be part of the main event one day, you know. I remember, like, watching those guys. And I just imagine being with those guys. It's one of those things you just you think about, but you're never really, never really sure if you can do it. And once you finally get there, it's like, I can't even believe I'm here. Now. It's the best feeling in the world.
I feel that Roger Grace is the one guy that's standing in my way from being the best grappler in the world. And uh, that's who I have to beat, and that's who I want to beat. I've been preparing myself for this term for the last three months. That's all I've been focusing on. I'm tapping, that's all I see. He's tapping. Every time I see it, it's he's tapping. I'm taking him down, I'm passing his guard, and I'm making him tap. His condition is great right now, but as, as always, you're always looking to push harder, push harder, go faster, try to take that condition to the highest level with the amount of time that we have. I'm very confident for this fight, man. I, uh, normally, close to the fight, when I'm one month away, I get very anxious, and you know, you got this little voice in the back of your head. What if you get tired, or what if he gets this position on you? What if you lose, or what if the doubt, you know, the anxiety? It's always there, telling you like, what if, what if, what if. This time, I don't, I don't hear that. It's not there. You know, it's just confidence. This is Robert's life. You know, he's this way he's training for. This is, you know. This is, uh, you know, tunnel vision. Tunnel vision for this fight. Everything is geared towards, you know, eat, sleep, training towards Roger Gracie. We're preparing for, like you say, a pinnacle bout. A bout that's, you know, it's gonna be in the record books. So obviously we're trying to push the boundaries and go one step further. Come on, arms up, drive. Come on, you're almost there, you're almost there, go quick. Let's go, let's go, come on, go harder, 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 let's go. Finish, 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 finish. You know, with Robert, a lot of times I tell him, listen, I, I mean, this, this tiredness is, is on the mind. He is, you know, at, at any given point, he has the right to revoke the pain that he's in. You know, he's not injured, right? It's, it's really just a mental battle. And, and at any, any given time, he can say, listen, I'm, I'm not that tired. I'm, I'm going to push myself more. And he's been able to do that throughout his whole career, and, and that's why he's a champion. We've been preparing for it for a long time now. I deserve to win. I'm training hard. You know, and when I train hard, I know I deserve to win. I don't, I don't honestly don't believe he's training as hard as I am. You know, I honestly don't believe he's put it, he's put as much time studying my game as I have studying his. Anybody that watches him train knows that, that this guy's a winner. This guy's gonna go out there and he's gonna go out there to, to kill the guy he's gonna grapple against. He doesn't try to just win on points. He wants to go out there and finish the guys that he's, that he's wrestling against. And uh, guys like that, I can appreciate their games. Um, I think the fight with Roger is gonna be one of those fights where one of those guys is gonna get finished. You know, I don't think it's going to be on points.